Hello. In this lesson, we're going to continue the talks about exponential functions and logarithm functions. We would like to recap the definition of function, right? We have talked about so many rules that can be called a function, right? A function is a rule that assigns to each input in domain exactly one output f of x in range. So we are familiar with this relationship by, by now, right? So x is the input, the output is f of x. We have vertical line test, and uh, we've done all of these functions. We've done all of these functions. And we discussed one-to-one -one function, increasing function, decreasing function, as well as the properties about a one-to-one -one function and its inverse. So, and last time, we just talked about the exponential functions and logarithm functions with base two, with base two. And of course, we also talk about even function, odd function, and the properties of function that are inverse to each other, right? The two inverse functions that are both one-to-one, -one and, um, you know, they have special properties. They have special properties. Any, anyway, so let's recap, recap what we did for base two exponential function and log uh, and log base two function, right? We have discussed these two functions and we did a graph, we, um, we did the rule, we, you know, we plotted points, we look at the graph and we figure out, you know, when X is approaching negative infinity and two to the power X approaching zero, from larger than zero, domain range, what, it's a one-to-one -one function, and it's also an increasing function. It's not even nor odd. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, so we saw it. Okay. So we saw the function from the perspective of one-to-one -one function. And we also saw it from the, the definition of uh, logarithm and we discussed domain and range and we use the application of domain and range. So we plotted all of these points, okay? So if you haven't watched that video, uh, which, is, um, which is titled, which is titled um, Exponential Function Logarithm Function Base Two, please do because these materials are meant to be coherent part of, um, of, the, you know, of the exponential logarithm function. We covered really everything about them uh, that we need to know. All right, so um, that, that's what we discussed last time, last time, okay? So now let's look at what if we have base three? What if we, what if we have base three? Okay, so the title of this video is for base three. Okay, so for base three, we like to start from the beginning. We like to start from the beginning. Okay, so from here. Okay, well, I'm gonna do this over three to the, uh, over two to the power X. So I wish, to, I wish to show you what has changed. A lot of the properties that we, we saw for base two and how is that reflected in this process? Okay, so we're gonna do a comparative study for log base three. So now we know about base two. So now let's change it to base three. New function, new rule. These, these two pairs definitively, this is one pair, right? One to one function to each other, one to one function and they're inverse to each other. We have done everything. So for base three, right? Let's see what's new. Let's see what is new. For three to the power X, for three to the power of X, right? Um, Maybe I can put it, I can, I can just put it, put this over, okay? Three to the power X, right? The rule has changed slightly. The rule has changed slightly. 
So it's going to be three to the power x as output. Domain, we will observe negative number, positive number zero, right? If it's negative number, of course, the base now has all changed to three. The base has changed to three. So this is three times three times three. And three times three times three, that's going to be 27. It's still a positive number. It's still a positive number. When the input is half, this is going to be root three, uh, square root of three, because the, the base is three. Okay, so square root of three, still positive number. When x is zero, it's three to the power zero, so the output is one. And in terms of domain and range, the domain is all real numbers, and the range is going to be three to the power x greater than zero three to the power x greater than zero, okay? So domain and range is similar, okay, similar. Now, if we talk about one sentence about domain and range, so it's three to the power x larger than zero for any real number, or in short, right, three to the power x is positive for any real number x shorthand notation, that's for base three. Plotting points, okay, let's see how we're gonna plot those points, right? What do we had here? We already have two to the power of x. This is a two to the power of x for base, for base two, for base two. For base three, what is going to happen? What is going to happen, okay? So what I like to do as a comparison study, Okay, as a comparison study, I'm going to put this table. Okay, I'm going to see. I'm going to show you how you're going to graph two, uh, three to the power x, three to the power x. Okay, so that's the input for two to the power x, and these are the outputs, and these are inputs output together, right? And for three to the power of x. Okay, I'm gonna put that table right next to it. But this time we know the output follows slightly different rules. So it's gonna be three to the power of X, right? So all of these bases has become three. Three to the power of X. Three to the power of X. And of course the, the value will change, right? So this output is three to the power of X. Okay, I know you probably could do it ahead of me, but be patient with, uh, with yourself and just do this, just go through this process to see the details, to see the details, right? So I keep the same input and, uh, and you know, choose because we have different outputs, three to the power X. So this is gonna be 27, right? And this is gonna be nine, still positive number, and this is the one third, okay? And that's gonna be one, and that's gonna be three, and that's gonna be nine, and that's gonna be 27. Um, so over here, that's gonna be three to the power of 100, and this is gonna be 27, and this is one ninth, one third, zero comma one, one three, Two nine three twenty seven. What happens if we plot all of these points in that graph? What if we plot all of these points in that graph? Okay, so let's see what are we getting. Let's see what we're getting. We're gonna choose the color. We're gonna have to choose a color, don't we? Okay, so let's look at the first point, right? The first point, I'm going to make it uh, the negative three, one over 27, right? The negative three, negative three, one over 27, right? So if I make the point of, say, make it green, Okay, 
see where is it going to be. It is going to be closer to zero, closer to x axis, but this, this is still above x axis. Okay, it's lower than it seems to be lower than the than the black. Of course, the black one is one over eight, right? One over eight is larger than one over twenty seven, so it's a slightly lower than the black point on two to the power x. So if we keep plotting these points, I I hope you can. If you're watching this piece, I would like you to pause, just pause a little bit, make, us, make some educated guess, okay, before you put those other points on the graph. And uh, so let's, let's, let's keep going, okay? So I'm gonna put on the next point. Okay, the next point I'm gonna put in there is going to be, um, Negative two one nines. Okay, negative two one nines. Okay, let's see where this point is going to be. Okay, you see it's a little bit lower than the respective low, uh, you know, black point negative two one quarter beneath it. And then keep going, we can anticipate the next point is going to be here. And where would that be, right? So let's, let's keep going for a few more times. Okay, let's keep going for a few more times, right? Um, let's keep going. Okay, negative one, negative one, one third, negative one, one third. And I'm gonna plot a zero comma one, Zero comma one. Take a look. Okay. You see zero comma one on the two to the power x curve and the zero comma one on three to the power x term. They actually overlap. Okay. So look at that. Look at that. Okay. So this piece and that piece, they overlap, even though they have different bases. But the other points to the x equals to negative side, input equal negative side, three to the power x is lower than two to the power x. You see the green, the green points are lower, okay? How about these other point? One comma three, two comma nine, three comma 27. What will happen then, right? So let's, let's, let's do it. And the seeing is believing, right? Seeing is believing. So I'm gonna do, one comma three, two comma nine, three comma 27. I want you guys to guess, okay? Please guess, pause and guess and plot your own before you continue to watch. So now I'm gonna put the points in place. All right, so here. So now I'm gonna put a one comma three, One comma three, two comma nine, two comma nine, three comma twenty seven. Have you done your guesses? Have you plotted your points? Okay, so now let's see truth to be revealed. Now you see to the left, right? You input it when you input our negative. Two to the power x is higher than the green, three to the power x. But when the input are positive, three to the power x is higher than two to the power x. Okay, so now let's connect the dots. Let's connect the dots. Okay, I'll make, I'm gonna make the fonts just a little bit smaller. Okay, let's connect the dots. Okay, let's connect the dots of the green. Okay, so that's gonna be, V to the power of X in green. There. Okay. Lower when input is negative, higher when the input are positive. Okay. So you may like you may like to mark. 
right? You may like to mark that this is two to the power X, right? This is two to the power X. And this other one, which is green is three to the power X. Okay, you can, you should also mark the points accordingly. Right, you can see for the same inputs, negative three, one eighth, negative three, one over 27, right? So you can see which one is higher, which one is lower. Okay, input is still the horizontal measurement, the horizontal, horizontal measurement from the origin, excuse me, and the output is still the vertical measurement from the origin. All right, so let's keep going. You can see these two functions actually very similar, actually very similar, right? There's another similarity is that when X is approaching negative infinity, three to the power X is also approaching zero from larger than zero. So we put a little sh positive sign on the shoulder, over the shoulder. Okay, with that done, so they have the same domain and the same same domain and same range. The only difference is a different basis. So you can generalize, right? For base four, base five, base 10, it's going to be similar. It's going to be similar. So continue, right? So that's the graph. A picture tells a thousand words, right? Now, um, I don't think we need, we need, we don't need to do that. Is it one to one? Right, it is, right? It is one to one. Because if base is three, when input are different, the output are different also. All right, so now we're gonna bring the curve with us. Right there, right, for both of them. And they're also increasing, right? They're also increasing. So three to the power X is also an increasing function by the definition of increasing function, right? So whenever input one is less than input two, the, the output for input one is less than the output for input two. So increasing function. Even odd, no, okay? Even odd, no. Okay, they are neither even nor odd for similar reason. Okay, neither even. Okay, so at this point, you may like to um, derive, right? You may like to derive. So they're neither even nor odd. There's no, there's no symmetry about the y axis, right? So they're neither even nor odd. Well, three to the power x is a one-to-one -one function. So it has exactly one inverse, right? So how do we find that inverse? Similar, very similar to what we did with two to the power X. The only difference now is base three, right? Domain range are the same. And we, when we try to find the uh, inverse, we're gonna have three here, three to the power Y, and we swap domain and range swapped domain and range swapped, okay? X used to belong to all real numbers with the swap, these two swapped, okay? So the inverse function is log base three X with domain positive number as domain, which is the same as log base two and ranges from negative infinity to positive infinity. By definition of logarithm, when for base three, for base three, so this is a base three, right? For any base, right, less than, no, greater than zero, not equals to one, so that is true. Therefore, for base three, it is true. So we can see that exponential function three to the power X and log base three functions 
these two functions are inverse function to each other. Okay, so the inverse function has log base three, log base three, right? And uh, domain from the perspective of um, that's the definition of function, you can see when the input is negative one, there's no output, right? Because no number three to the power of X, okay? Three to the power of anything is always larger than zero. So there's no solution here. And therefore three to the power of X, it's always positive. So from every angle, from every angle, from the, the definition, from the common definition, uh, from the common definition of logarithm, right? From the common definition of a logarithm, we know that the domain for three to the power X is all real numbers and the range will be all, uh, will be all positive numbers. So just the same as for, you know, for two to, for two to the power X. And from the perspective of inverse function, we also draw the same conclusion. So you can see the consistency. You can see the consistency, okay? So now let's recall the definition of function. Let's recall the definition of function, right? So function is a rule that assign each input in domain exactly one output in range. In this case for negative one, by this rule function, there's no output for it. Therefore, negative one cannot be in the domain for the same reason, for the same reason, okay? No negative number should be in the domain of log base three X. So there's in the domain, the domain has to be positive numbers, okay? Uh, to summarize, right? So the domain here, It's all positive numbers, all positive numbers. So here we cover the two perspective. One is the function perspective. The other one is from the classical definitions perspective, right? Anyway, it cannot be zero either. So this piece, this paragraph is to, is, is a narrative similar to what we did in, uh, similar to what we did in the, for base two, right? For zero, there's no output, right? There's no output because three to the power of any number is always a positive. It can never be zero, there's no solution. So no negative number and no zero, zero cannot be. So in the end to summarize, right? The, the domain for log base three X is gonna be positive. Okay, so now let's graph log base three, log base three, okay? Previously we graphed, previously we graphed, this is, these, th this picture, okay? This picture is um, two to the power X, Okay, so this is a two to the power X. And the other one is um, log base two X. Log base two X, okay? And now we just, we just graph three to the power X, right? So we're gonna put that in the picture. We're gonna, we're gonna put that into the picture. That in the picture, we're gonna be consistent using the green color. Okay, three to the power of X. Okay, and we know, you know, we, we just did it, right? We just did it. How about log base three X, right? How about log base three X? So this is about, these output are log base two X, okay? Next, next, what will happen if we do log base three X, right? So what if the base becomes three? Okay, so we're gonna do it one by one, okay? 
the choices of input will be slightly different, but we still choose them from the same domain and same range. Okay, so let's let's clean this up. Let we we know what these are, right? Okay, two to the power x, uh, three to the power x, log base two x. So next we're gonna because we know the domain is positive, right? Domain for um, for these are the same. You know, x must be positive, right? And this one here, x must be positive, okay? So we're going to choose numbers. We're gonna choose numbers approaching zero. So let's not look at this piece first, right? So we're gonna look at the easy part, even though this is gonna have a change of base, right? The base will be all changed. And the input, I'm going to change the input as well, okay? But you will notice how I change the input, okay? You will notice how I would change the input. This input, I'm going to change it to three to the power of four, okay? Three to the power of four. Three to the power of four is nine times nine is 81. 81, okay? So over here, I'm gonna have three to the power of negative four, three to the power of negative four. So log base three, three to the power of negative four, and the power is negative four, okay? Because negative four power three is gonna be three to the power of negative four. So this is gonna be 81 input, output negative four. On this one, I'm gonna change it to three, to the power of three. So this is gonna be 27. And this is gonna be three to the power of negative three and the output will be negative three. So over here is gonna be 27 under one comma negative three. Okay, then we're gonna, we're gonna plot the points. Make sure you know how to calculate this, okay? Follow the definition, right? Follow the definition. Make sure you know how to do them because you're gonna, see, you're gonna see them on the quiz, okay? The next one, I'm gonna choose three squared. Did you see a pattern? Yes, I choose these numbers. So for my convenience, there's a pattern, right? So this is gonna be three to the power of negative two. So that's the input, right? Base is three. The input is one ninth. One ninth is one over three squared. One over three squared is three to the power of negative two. So the output is negative two. So for input of one over nine, the output is negative two. And for input of one third, right? This is one third. So three to the power of negative one is one third. So that's output is negative one. So when input is one third, the output is negative one. For input of one, output is, okay, one is equal to three to the power of zero as well. So one comma zero, this point stay the same, right? Other points vary. So this is three, when input is three, output is one. Input is three, output one. When input is nine, three squared, This is three squared as input, the output is two. And when input is three to the power of three, I hope you see that pattern already. So this is 27 and the output, right? The output is three. So here 27, output is three, okay? So we know the, uh, what the other curves are. We're gonna, we're gonna put the points in place. I want you to compare points left and right, right? So we're gonna see something, we're gonna see something. We're gonna plot some points, we're gonna plot some points. How about we plot, start from something simple, right? One ninth, negative two. One ninth, negative two. Uh, what color shall we choose, right? What color shall we choose? We have to, we're gonna choose a different color. We're gonna choose a different color. Um, how about we choose a, oh, let's see what color we like to have. How about light blue, light blue, right? 
one ninth negative two. First, you guess that place, right? Boom. You see, it's closer to the y axis, but doesn't touch it. It should not touch it, right? It's a, it's a closer to uh, y axis. So that's one third negative one. One third negative one. One third negative one. Right, add an item, one third negative one. Where is it? It's over there to the left, right? It's a little bit to the left. They have the same height. You can see the way I choose these points, they have the same outputs. They have the same outputs, right? The input is slightly different. So input is, is you know, horizontal measurement. The horizontal measurement, uh, you can easily compare number, numbers, right? One nine was one quarter, right? One ninth is smaller than one quarter. The next point I'm going to put, right, is one zero, um, one zero. Okay, so for one zero, okay, I think I'm gonna put all of the rest of the points in place. Okay, so one zero, wait. No, wrong, wrong. One comma zero, add a three comma one. All these are blue dots. Four, uh, wait, nine comma two, nine comma two. Okay, I've made a typo on the table. I'm gonna change right away. So here should be nine, nine comma two, okay? Uh, let me do one more, well, that's okay. Uh, now. The blue, the blue. So here it should be nine comma two. Sorry, I forgot to change that. Oopsie. All right. Let's see. Let's see for ourselves, right? When the input is smaller than one, when the input is between zero and one, the output is to the left of log base 2x. On the, on the input larger than one, and the, the curve is lower, the curve is lower. On the other side is higher, right? So let's connect the dots. Let's connect the dots, right? So this is gonna be a green, uh, no, I'm sorry, this is gonna be a blue, okay? Three to the power x, okay? I, I want you guys to plot the points for yourself. Okay, that's why I'm doing this. Once you've done that, never forget. Never forget. What did I do? I think light blue. Why doesn't connect the dots? Could you please connect the dots? Oh, I think I made a mistake. I made a mistake somehow. Okay. Oh, three to the power X, that's my mistake, okay. Uh, that, was, that was green, my bad, okay. I need to add another item, sorry about that. So this is gonna be log base three of X. This time it, it will show, okay. And you can see the black and the red are inverse to each other and the green and the light blue are inverse to each other. Let's mark these curves, right? So we know so much about it. They have such similar properties. They have such similar properties. Okay, so let's mark it before we move forward. Okay, let's mark it before we move forward. Over here, the first one we did, the first one we did, is this a log base two x, right? The last one we did is the log base three x, right? And now let's look at the red. The red is two to the power of x, the green, is three to the power X. Uh, 
Okay. Imagine, imagine, if the base is a number between two and three. If the base is a number between two and three. Okay. What well, is there a number between two and three? Of course, there are a lot of number between two and three. And one of the numbers we're heading to is E, right? E, oh, I don't like this, look, okay. One of the numbers is E, okay? E is between two and three. What will happen? What will happen, right? If, if the base become E, and then you say, what is E? Well, E is, e is equal to 2.7 and followed by many, many, many digits infinitely, okay? For that base, we have exponential functions. So where would E to the power X be? Guessed it, okay? I'm not gonna give the answer yet. And what will be the inverse function for e to the power x? Where would that be, right? For log, for log base e, right? Log base e is ln x. We're gonna talk about it in next lesson, in next lesson. So right now you can see for two to the power x, three to the power x, these pairs, right? We got, we, we're, we're dealing with two pairs here. There are so much similarity. What is more, this is also true. This is also true, right? We didn't address that, but it is also true. So when X is approaching zero, right? So when X is approaching zero, the output is approaching what? The output is approaching what? Negative infinity. So this is still true. This, this is still true. Okay. All right, so let's continue and finish this up. Okay, so three to the power X and two to the power X. They're like in the same family, right? They're like in the same family. So we're gonna bring this picture with us, right? Bring the picture with us. And we certainly have increased our knowledge base. If this is a review for you, um, that's great. Summarize, summarize, right? So this is about two to the power X or three to the power. Uh, th this is about base two, right? So how about base three? How about base three? How about base three? For base three, we have similar situation, don't we? We have similar situation, absolutely similar. Absolutely similar, okay? So this will be three to the power X, base three, right? And of course, the curves are different. The curves are different. I'm going to bring those pictures here. Okay, I'm going to bring those pictures here. Uh, this is going to be three to the power x. Where's my, you know what? I'm going to just redo that whole picture. Um, see if I can copy from before. Three to the power X. Let's see how, how to do this better. Oh, never mind. Just take this one. Okay. Take this one for our summary. Okay. Take this one for our summary. Right. So this is going to be placed here. Oh. Doesn't do it. There, that should do it, right? But this is um, the three to the power x is it's a green one, right? And this one over here, you know the similarity. Um, we we can clean it up a little bit if you want. Okay. Um, and this one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, uh, uh, I'm gonna tidy this up a little bit just to, to for the, because in this piece with three to the power X, we only have the green, we only have the green. 
And for this uh, log base three X, we just have the blue. We just have the blue. So you can cross out the rest of them if you wish. Domain range, they're all the same. And this is just going to be base three. And this is going to be base, base three. Right, so much similarity, so much similarity. Uh, you can tidy it up a little bit, right? Um, I think I'm just going to leave it here for, for just for a comparison, okay? There's no need. I'm just gonna mark it here. And this is going to be three to the power X. So by, I think by this time you guys already got it. If you have watched up to this point, you got it. And, uh, but these details are important. Guess what, what I'm gonna quiz you on. I'm gonna quiz you on these details. Okay, you have seen some examples last week, right? How I would quiz you. The devils are in the detail. The devils are the detail. Okay, so now, now let's verify another important properties about inverse functions. Okay, we did that for log base two. So now let's do it for base three. Okay, base three, these two functions are inverse to each other. So we will choose, uh, we will have composition F and it's inverse and F inverse and F and the, the axes are chosen from the domain of the inverse in this, in this piece and this X is from the domain of F. You see, we're talking about the same thing. We're talking about the same thing. And all the details, almost the same, almost the same. The only thing is the base is different, okay? Uh, if you guys watched up to this point, please maybe you pause and you do it on your, by yourself to see if you can, if you can produce these um, you know, steps. It's absolutely important that you not only be able to take notes and you're able to, you also be able to do it by yourself. Okay, be able to do it by yourself. So all this verification is to, to show the properties of functions that inverse to each other, right? This is a consistent. We have done uh, so many functions. We've done so many functions, right? Previously eight, and now uh, base two log, exponential log, base three exponential log, they have the same properties, don't they? Right, so that's the, the that's the that's what we we've been studying, and uh, and regarding their graph, right? Um, we have studied this much, and next we're gonna study e. We're gonna study e. Okay, e to the power x, e to the power x. Okay, and of course we're gonna study the details about e to the power x. I'm gonna have just a little introduction. Okay. So we have, we have, we're gonna mark these one more time. I'm gonna mark these one more time before we, before we close this lesson. And we're gonna mark this, right? The blue, this guy is log base three X. The black is log base two X. Okay, you want to know all of these points. Okay, I have the tendency to test you, to quiz you, which is which, right? You probably have a, a taste of it last week. And the red is two to the power X. The green, three to the power of x. Now, my next question. If I graph e to the power of x, where would it be? Where would it be? Where would it be? You may like to pause, right? You may like to pause. Yep, I think you probably guessed it, okay? That curve is going to be, okay, let's see what color we're gonna choose, okay? 
uh, we're going to choose a different color, purple. Have you guessed it? All right. Boom. Between two, base three to the power x and base two to the power x. It's right in between. Okay. The inverse. Okay. I give you a heads up. What's the inverse of e to the power x? It's the inverse. Well, it's the inverse. It's the inverse is f inverse. Okay, well, we're, 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 we're gonna do the whole nine yards for this one. But for now, as, as, as far as the graph goes, this is the inverse, right? From what we know, do you, where do you think ln x is going to be? And we're gonna choose a color. We're gonna choose a color, right? So we have purple. Uh, we're going to choose what color? What color? This blue, light blue, light blue green. All right, let's see. There. Okay, so the purple is e to the power x. The purple is e to the power x. And uh, this lighter blue, this lighter blue is ln x. Okay, in our next lesson, we're gonna focus on e to the power x and ln x. These two functions will be, con will be uh, very frequently used in calculus classes. Two to the power x, three to the power x, log base two x, log base three x, however, they're actually not very often used. So these two, okay, these two, e to the power x and ln x, these are the darlings of, how, uh, of calculus classes, okay? So we're gonna have a specific lesson just to cover these two, okay? Make sure you understand how we did everything in this class. You'll be quizzed on these, okay? And I will see you guys in the next lesson. Thank you for watching.